Welcome back to another episode of Not Enough Projects. Today we got another rototiller. I picked this up for free off Craigslist. From what I understand, it's been sitting at least a couple years and was put away because it was hard to start and eventually wouldn't start at all. Just visually, it looks like everything's really in quite good condition on this thing. The tines still have some paint on them. The whole thing is painted. It's not really resting. Some of the stickers are even on it still. It's really in pretty great shape. Everything linkage wise is free too. More than likely we're just going to have a carb cleaning and it should be good to go but you never know it could be something interesting. First thing I'm going to do is just check if it's free. Yep. Definitely free. Take a look in the gas tank. Show you guys. get a light in here really doesn't look too bad a little bit of gunk in there it's not rusty or anything and the fuel actually still looks like fuel put that cap back on here for now let's check for spark all right, I've got an old spark plug here just for testing purposes. It's a little loose, but it should be enough to test for spark. Oop, got a little zap there. I don't know how well it was showing up, but there's definitely spark. So we should be good there. Let's pop the plug out, try putting some fuel down that's throat, see what happens. Almost forgot, before we get too far, let's check and see what it's got for oil. Grab a pick. Well, it's got oil, it doesn't even look that bad. It's a little thin. Doesn't smell like gas or anything. So we should be good to run it. Looks like we need the bigger socket. Make sure none of this junk around it falls in. A little black, not too bad. drizzling a little bit of fuel. I use two-stroke mix just because it's got a little bit of oil in it. Upper cylinder lubricant. Should be enough to get it to cough. All right, let's see. Definitely run. Let's see if I'm fast enough to check for uh, tying and drive engagement. Nope, we're gonna need to get the carb going in order to actually test it out. It looks like I'm not fast enough. Doesn't look like it'll be too bad to do this real quick. A Little bit of fuel leaking out the choke lever. 
So yeah, let's grab some tools and pop this off real quick. Right, let's pop the air cleaner off. Very clean. Should be able to pop this breather off. It looks like we just got a couple linkages way down below that I'll show you. And then one over here that we need to take off and then uh, should be good. Let's see if we can loosen these carb hold down bolts. Muffler's in the way just a little bit. That one's out. You can see one of the carb hold down bolts are down here. A little tricky to get a wrench on. I guess you could remove the fuel tank and that's probably the way you're supposed to do it. Let's see how hard that would be. Looks like just some Phillips head screws. Let's give that a go. Obviously you want to make sure none of the stuff falls down into the gas tank. Even the seal feels really good. It's surprising. This must have been taken care of. And then that breather hold down bolt we saw on the other side. It looks like that's another one that holds the carb to the gas tank. Now this is a little different than you normally see on uh, lawn equipment and stuff like that. This is like an updraft style carb where there's no float bolts. The whole tank, that's basically the float bolt. So it looks like we just got a little 3 8 bolt down on the underside. Here we go. Looks like this is the throttle cable. I don't think we need to remove it though. Now that we've got that kind of down and out of the way, I think we can get to the other carb bolt. So it looks like we still got governor cable or spring. Oh, it looks like maybe it's just a spring. Holding this up. Let's see if I can get it out. There we go. Then there's a kill wire way down here. That we need to pull out. There we go. Off the fuel tank comes. Should be able to get to this last carb bolt. Let's use a wrench probably, it's easiest. There we go. Let me just have a little throttle cable here. Off that comes. Here's our curb. Surprisingly, these plastic pickups are actually in pretty good shape. A little bit of gunk in this. Let's get this curb out onto the bench and give it a quick once over. I need to replace this paper, but for now it'll do okay. So let's get this gas tank gasket off. Don't want to rip it because I'm not going to get a new one. Well, I will if I rip it, but. 
I don't want to get a new one. Get a razor blade to try to help it up. There it goes. Still in good shape. Pop this side cover off. Right, let's see how stuck on this cover is. Hopefully not very. Okay, it's a diaphragm style kind of thing we got going on here. So these are like reed valves. See if the gasket will come off without tearing. Nope. That's okay. It still feels pretty pliable. A lot of times these will turn like rock hard. This one doesn't feel that bad. Got this little spring. This carb overall really doesn't seem that bad. Let's pop out the jet. See how many turns out we are first. Um, about one turn out. A little bit of gunk on the needle. how tight this is. I may need to go grab a wrench. Yep. Alright, this is a half inch. A little crush washer. There's our actual jet. See how tight it is in there. I may need to get a better screwdriver. Nope. A lot of times they get really stuck. And you have to go with the biggest screwdriver you can fit in there. Doesn't really seem like it's clogged. Well, there's not much else we can take out here. You can see how the choke operates. I think we should go ahead, give this a spray down, get everything cleaned up and get it back in, I guess. Okay, well I gave this a quick clean with the blow gun. I blowed all the passages out and cleaned any of the loose gunk off of it. Really, this thing is clean. I, I wonder if we should have filled it up with fuel and actually tested it before we got too far, but we're here now, so. I don't even know if this really needs any carb cleaner action. I think I'll give the jet a quick blowout, then we'll get it back together. So you know what, after blowing the jet out, it looks like it actually was plugged. Hopefully you can see how much more light is making it through now. Hopefully that was our problem. If not, we'll be finding out shortly. So I guess let's get this reinstalled here. 
Almost forgot the crush washer. Give the needle a quick, quick clean. Go ahead, bottom this out, and then we'll come out a full turn. about where we were if I remember it. Now we just need to get this diaphragm back in place. I think this is the way it went. This gas gets a little worn, you could say, I guess, but it should do okay. All right, well, I guess we can go try getting this back on the tiller and see what happens. All right, well, I guess we can try getting this back in place. Oh, I just realized I forgot to get the throttle linkage back on. All right, well, we got both carb to head bolts on. I think we should be good to get the gas tank back up and in. Let's check the gas one more time. Looks like there is some junk in there, but... Yeah, let's try dumping out all this gas. Who knows how old it is and what kind of quality it is. I'm gonna go grab a container and put that in. Alright, I've got a good container here. Let's try dumping this out. That's most of it. This tank is really remarkably clean. Well, let's get it up and in. We do need to get this spring on. There we go. No, I think we have to. Get it back on the carb before the spring. There we go. Now let's do the spring. Springs on. Then there is a kill wire down here, but got it routed in place. Let's get that sucked down. And the last thing is just this lower support bolt holding on the gas tank. And then the kill wire. Let's get some gas in here and see if it'll fire up. Let's give it a trickle down the carb. Help us start it. Well, I guess we can try that out. Little bit of fuel down the spark plug hole. You know what? Let's actually uh, check for spark real quick. Yep, we're still good there for sure. This should get it primed up.
Still not pulling fuel. Doesn't seem like it at least. So it likes it if my hand's over it. See that it'll only run if my hand is on it. Interesting. Let's try popping this boot off a little bit. That's okay. Well, we got it to run there. I don't know why it was being so stubborn. Let's try getting this breather back on. Well, let's see if it'll start back up without any trouble. So it doesn't look like our throttle control is letting it go all the way open throttle. So we're gonna need to adjust the throttle cable real quick. That's no big deal. Get you guys down so you can see. So throttle cable's down here. It's at its full extreme. Forward. Well, maybe it is actually letting it go all the way. Yeah, you can see it's stopping there. Interesting. Well, I guess probably um, that just allows the governor to go full. And then when the governor's under load, it'll put it up to full throttle. The kill switch was not working like you guys saw. So let's see if we can figure that out. I wonder if it's just because this thing is cruddy. This is where the wire clips on. I'm trying that out, I guess. All right, let's see if it starts back up easy again. All right, so the battery died there. I'm not exactly sure how much you guys missed. I'm still chasing down the kill switch. 
So I'm going to show you guys how it works. So when the throttle goes all the way back to where it's supposed to kill, you can see there's an arm that swings back and it's supposed to make contact with a little lug that's sticking out of where the kill switch wire clips on. If it died before I showed you guys that, this is how it goes on. See this little clip you push down, it goes in there. Messed around with it a little bit. Let's see if we can get it to start back up and then see if it'll kill itself. While we're here, let's get the air cleaner back on. See this underside definitely needs cleaned. Not a huge deal. All right, start it back up. Yep, it's working now. Try starting it back up one more time. Yeah, I think this thing's ready to go back to work. One thing I did notice, the axle seals are leaking, and those axle seals actually go into the transmission. So I'm gonna check the transmission level because if it's too low, I don't wanna burn this thing up. Looks like the plug is over here on this side. You can see the plugs right here. Looks like it's a 716 square drive. Now, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but on the casting, it says oil level right here about halfway up the fill hole. So we should have oil coming out. And we do not. Let's use this little angle screwdriver to see how far down it is. There's none on it. Let me grab a zip tie so we can stick it down there. I got a zip tie. Let's bend it down. Looks like there's just a tiny amount of oil in there. Now the guy who gave this to me was actually nice enough to give me the manuals with it, which is really neat. See, this is the parts catalog. Some really neat stuff in here. Got parts diagrams for everything. The owner's manual has a section in the back with all of the fluid requirements. Looks like for the transmission it takes 90 weight or 140 weight. It actually says don't use multi-viscosity oil. This thing, it looks like it's a 78 model I believe. You can see here the original owner actually wrote down the serial number. It says date of delivery was December 4th, 78. Really cool. These are in really great shape. But anyways, you can see on here, there's these axle seals. Number one, oil seal, double lip, double lip wheel shaft, left and right sides. I'm gonna see if you can still get those because if you can, might as well replace them. If not, I'll just have to top this up every now and then, but it's still a good machine. So this is really cool. Looks like they still make these axle seals. 10 bucks, next day delivery. I think that's what we'll be doing. I'll get these ordered and then we can come back and put them in. All right, got our new axle seals. So I'm gonna start by just popping the wheel off. I think they're held on by just some, uh, you know, spiral clips or whatever that get pounded through. So I don't know where all my punches went, but I've got this crappy screwdriver. It looks like it's already been used and abused in the same way. Let's see if we can knock these pins out. It looks like I might be able to get a bigger punch in there.
nearly out. There it goes. Yeah, you can see it's a spiral clip. Just sheet metal rolled up. But now, the wheel will slide off. So I'm gonna get something to stick under the center of the tiller, just to hold it up once we get the wheel off. I'll just probably stack some wood. I'm gonna go grab a towel or something and clean that off. Looks like we've got a little snap ring here. There's a snap ring that sits on the axle and prevents these covers from coming out. Let me go grab the snap ring players. Comes out just like that. I need a pick to get those out. Well, here's the seal. You see, it's definitely leaking. Let's compare it to our new ones. Well, it looks about right. Yeah. Now we just need to figure out how to get it out of there. Let's see if I can just get it with this pick. Mm, it's in there pretty good. I'm gonna do some thinking on what the best way to get that out of there is, and I'll get you back. All right, I think I'm gonna try collapsing the outer part of the seal. See if we can get that to go. Obviously you don't want to... Oop. Mess up the axle, which I might have. Let's see. I think I need to get a smaller screwdriver. Right, this one's a little thinner. Hopefully we can fit it between the axle and the gear case. Pounding it further in. That is not ideal. Here's our old seal. Now it looks like unfortunately there's a little bit of a groove. I can't tell exactly how bad because my finger won't go back there. Some garbage got behind the seal, you can see. I think I can just feel it with the I think we're going to try maybe getting some light sandpaper or emery, emery cloth and clean up around there. We're also going to need to clean all this grime off so we can get the new seal on without damaging it. I'm going to go grab that sandpaper. I'm gonna go grab some more. And I got some fresh stuff. Let me bring you guys in a little closer and see. So hopefully it shows up on camera. The shaft is pretty pitted back behind the seal. And there's also a groove where the seal was riding. Got to clean it up about as much as I think I can. So I guess we'll put on the new seal. It'll probably still leak some, but that's not a huge deal. I mean, these things don't get much hours, so just check the oil every now and then, top it off. So here's our new seal. Should 
be good to just slide it on. I am going to go grab some oil to lube it up and then we can throw it on. I think I'm going to use a piece of wood to drive it in a little bit at a time. Well, that's not too bad. I guess now we can get all the little shims back in place. Looks like we need to drive it back a little further. Might be enough, let's see. Yeah, it's sat down in that groove. I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit with the sandpaper. Just get some of the gunk on there off. Perfect. All right, we got one side done. Now I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and get the case filled back with, up with oil and test it out. All right, I picked up some gear oil for the transmission. I'm gonna use some straight 140 GL4. That's what Troy Built recommends. I think you can also use uh, 85 140 GL4 and probably straight 80, 75, 90 or whatever, but it honestly you're probably fine with whatever you can get your hands on. Although, given that we saw some wear on these axles, so I don't know if these seals are going to seal very well, I'm going to. That's why I went with the thickest I could get, 140. Looks like that funnel is just too big. I'm also going to pop out the side plug so we know when it's full. There we go. Alright, let's fire it up and uh, drive it a little bit. Everything seemed to work okay. Hopefully, I don't know if it was in frame, but I adjusted the air fuel mix and it cleaned up really well. I think it was, we had it way too rich. So yeah, I think this thing's ready to go back to work. So I think I'll go till the field. And I'll see you guys next time.